there were two uh, BNC cables inside the package and this is one of them. Now let's check the quality of the cable. I set here in the RF generator 1 MHz and uh, for the level minus 10 dBm. And we can see down, down here the spectrum analysis measuring minus 10 dBm. Now let's change the frequency to 2.96 GHz. 2.96 gigahertz and pick the marker again. Now we can see that the level dropped just 0.7 dBm. Well, the uh, waveform generator I bought uh, can output sinusoids of uh, with 200 megahertz maximum and 80 megahertz for square waves and we know that perfect square waves have only odd harmonics 2.96 gigahertz is the 37th harmonic of uh, 80 megahertz square wave so we can say that the cables are good enough for this model I bought. One thing that bothers me a lot is the noise produced by the fans of some instruments. Well, I, ha I have a couple of instruments here over the bench and now you compare to the noise produced by the SDG6022. First of all, let's measure the ambient noise. About 46 dB. Now I will switch the oscilloscope and measure from about 10 centimeters or 4 inches from the fan. Fifty-eight dBs. Now this other one here. It's a frequency counter. Fifty-seven dBs. Now the signal. Fifty-five dBs. So the signal we can say it's a quiet instrument. Well, I will not bother you talking again about points extensively covered on the video shown on the YouTube channels Afrotech Mods and the Signal Path. I will briefly talk here about a couple of points, in my opinion, are probably the most important when you choose a waveform function generator. Jitter or Jitter, depending on where you are, and rise and fall time. In my opinion, these specifications separate low cost from professional instruments, telling a lot about the overall quality, especially the design quality of a waveform or function generator. Let's first have a look at the Siglens SDG6022X specification. For pulses, the rise and fall time can be adjusted, but the important thing here is that the minimum rise and fall time is 2 nanoseconds for the SDG6022X. For square waves, 
the rise and fall times are fixed and it's typically 2 nanosecond and maximum 2.4 nanosecond now in the case of jitter it's, it's specified here uh, the cycle to cycle uh, jitter uh, it's not clear why and it's a hundred picosecond but we will uh, see in a while that in fact it's much better than this well let's measure the rise and fall times of pulses uh, I will be using this the key side 53 238A for that uh, this is uh, an instrument with 20 picosecond of accuracy but actually this unit has 8.5 picosecond of accuracy and uh, it's important important to notice that to make this kind of measurement you need to terminate the cable properly you see here it's terminated with 50 ohm and coupling is DC and both instruments has an external time base, rubidium time base of 10 MHz. So they are synchronized. Well, let's set the output to pulses. And we have here 1 MHz, 1 volt peak to peak, and 2 nanosecond of rise time. Well, 2 nanoseconds is the minimum and you can see the key site is measuring 1.8 1.9 uh, nanosecond so less than two nanoseconds which is the minimum and uh, fall time 1.9 nanosecond also less than two nanosecond uh, Let's make, let's make an experiment here, changing the rise time to uh, 50 nanosecond. Now it's measuring 53, about 53, which is less than 5% of uh, error, which is good and let me change also the fall time to 50 nanosecond fall time 51.3 oh very good now let me set again to two nanosecond nanosecond and change the frequency to the maximum 80 megahertz and uh, post width to 6.25 25 uh, nanosecond it's still measuring less than 2 nanosecond the fall time and also the rise time ok let's now switch to square wave uh, 80 megahertz less than two nanosecond and fall time less than two nanosecond all right now i will try to measure the jitter of uh, 10 megahertz square wave uh, notice that the key site is in time interval mode and it will measure 
10,000 adjacent periods of the wave. We can see that the standard deviation is 14 uh, picosecond and the peak to peak value is 107 picosecond. Uh, remember that the accuracy of this instrument is 8.5 picosecond, so it can be even better. Uh, the peak to peak value is consistent with the 100 picosecond uh, of the signaling specification. Let's change now the frequency to 80 megahertz and measure again. We have now 12 picosecond and 88 picosecond, so basically the same. In regards to the spurs reporting the YouTube channel Afrotech Mods, we can see here that the issue was completely solved. The two screenshots at the top were the ones showing that video. On the left the output is off, on the right the output is on. About minus 66 dBm and here minus 72 dBm. The other two are my own screenshots and we can see that the spurs are now around minus 97 dBm, which is pretty good. When I was in the process of the purchase, I noticed that there was no information about the phase noise of the SDG6000X series in the specifications, and then I contacted them. The two screenshots I'm going to show here were taken in a random unit at Siglin and does not represent the production universe, as is usual with specifications. But even so, they say a lot about the quality of the instrument. It's known that mathematically we can transform phase noise data to TAI time interval error, also known as phase jitter. And as a matter of fact, there are even calculators you can find on the internet. This first plot, 10 MHz, leads to a TAI of 1.77 picosecond. And this second plot, 200 megahertz, leads to a jitter of 970.4 femtoseconds, less than one picosecond. And I must say, this is very, very good, comparable to the Keysight specifications. Concluding, I've been using the Sigland SDG6022X for just a couple of weeks. But up to now, I'm pretty happy with the purchase and with the three-year warranty. Until now, the only thing I'm missing is the possibility of making a copy of the screen in a USB flash drive for documentation purposes. But I think this would be easily included in the software in the future. I would like also to make clear that I didn't have any kind of financial help for Siglin. This is just a review from a random buyer. Thanks for watching.